So Farima, do you want to do uh, do you want to do a little intro for this? Sure. Do you want to say what we're going to do? So um, I'm just going to show a couple of uh, hand movements and footwork uh, of you know the whirling, and then see if we can catch some of the points. Uh, so basically, the the bowing. It is the even though it's a sign of hum, it's a sign of humbleness or being, you know, as a, we are servants to the divine, um, but it portrays the the one, the number one. This is the number one, and now we are the we are going to become the tree of life, the spirals of the tree of life, and so this would be our access point. And as we are going through this process this is the waterfall that i mentioned that now we are creating that way of bringing that giving water to the roots of the tree of life so that it can give us life so the tree can grow now of course if i had the skirt on you could see it go growing and growing it with the hands but now we'll do a little demonstration and then we start to bring the foot into the the access, so we have to come back. Um, I do have to mention that in the more of the uh, Turkish tradition of whirling, they bring they uh, pick up the right foot and they come back into the access point, and that keeps them in, in a very um, nice slow pace of whirling. Uh, the Iranian tradition is a little different, or the Indo-Iranian whirling is that they don't really pick up the foot all the way. They are actually more grounded within the roots. So they are basically down rather than lifting. So you're gonna see my foot doing that, being more grounded because I'm used, more used to that. And as I'm going to be whirling, my arms starts to create that uh, tree of life. And then it starts to go into the spires and bring in the elements and the sacred elements of the universe. So you see my wings, which are the soul. And then I become one with the soul. If I raise my arms up, I become the third eye. Again, the soul, the senses. Okay? The third eye that we have a soul and a body. And now we have that third eye. Okay. Oneness. Being one with the divine. Okay. So I can make water waves. The waves of life. Okay. Planets around. Branches of the tree of life. Spirals. And all being connected with the DNA as we are whirling. And I can point to the eight pointed star, bringing the seven sacred elements to life, whirling in the axis point, and then going back into number one. Giving back to me. So these are the branches of the tree of life. Okay. These are the you know the water waves that we do. Okay. This is the basically the soul flying. So these are the wings, um, and this is the oneness which goes to the third eye, the three. So from here, we go into the third, the triangle. Um, then we have, we basically have the, you know, the earth's going, the planet's going around us. Um, so I'm basically now going into the, just the circle. And you notice that I come out and I started to make that big sacred spiral and then my churning got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but there will be, sometimes there are whirling where we are pointing to the seven, you know, to the um, eight directions. Um, the others would be uh, going in and out, so we were whirling in and out. And as we are doing this, we are making 
small circles within a big circle. So, but I do basically just did a basic one for you. Okay, let's do uh, let's do a twirling. Let's do a shot from the top and okay. uh, let me know uh, when you're ready and maybe. All right, here we go. Should we try this with the costumes and see if we can see the the waves and the patterns? Yeah. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a whirling for you with proper costume. Um, and uh, white, we often wear white because white is the color of oneness. Um, it represents purification and um, because it is also the uh, sign of the soul, death or soul. Um, the, and the ancient tradition it was a sign of the virginity, the priestess of, you know, the virgin priestesses, but it's basically a sign of nothingness. You might also see often other whirlers wearing different colors, and it's, it's very normal to wear other colors. You know, I often wear red or blue or green, and those colors actually represent colors of planets. For example, red is Mars. Blue might be Neptune, um, uh, green is uh, Venus. So basically, um, colors, the yellow represents sun. So you will see different colors and the basically representation of, of planets. So we're going to get started so that you can actually see my movements of hand, uh, the points um, and the shapes I make to be connected with the sacred geometry and the planets and the sacred seven sacred um, elements of life. back to oneness.
show some examples of the different footwork style. One is the Mevlevi tradition, which is the Turkish whirling style. And what happens if they, they pick up the foot and they come back into the axis point, into a big circle. Then I'm going to go into the more Indo-Iranian tradition, which they are, both foot are grounded and they're constantly pointing, and that's where they're pointing to the pointed stars, the points of the stars. Um, but I'll also show you going in and back into the circles, because there is often times where we go in and out and, and out. So you can see the foot we're going in, out of the circle, coming into the circle, and that's where the spirals and the different circles within circles happen. Okay, so let's see if we can... Uh, so basically, are we going to do the first one first or the second one first? Well, I'm going to do the first one, which, the is? Point, which is the axis point, coming back into the axis point. Okay. Then I'm going to go into the different points, and then I'm going to go in and out of the circles, pointing the different foots. Ah, okay. So, let's see how the foot works. Okay, so I'm going And that was all three different styles together? Yeah, yes. back to back. Back to back. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, with the, at the same time that you're doing the uh, feet, the movements, you also have arms. Yes. And you also have your head doing stuff. Yes. So, <laughs> so I'm very complicated. Very complicated. <laughs> so should we look at? And is this the same pattern you follow? Uh, does it mimic what the feet are doing? Do the arms mimic what the feet are doing? Or is it yeah, it's pattern? all connected. It's all connected. Like I said, because we are that tree, so everything's connected. And so we we it's just the mind starts to control everything, and so we, we it's all connected. So we're all doing different things at okay. the same time, but it's all connected to one root. One root. Yeah. Okay, but is, is it going to be the same pattern as the feet? What the arm does? No, or no, is it no. different patterns? It's different patterns, yeah. Okay, it's different okay. patterns, yeah. Okay. So is there two styles for the hand? There is actually, it's very complicated. There are many styles for the hands. Like I said, because we have to manifest seven sacred elements within the dance, so we are manifesting movements of seven sacred birds, flowers, uh, the four elements, planets, uh, so we are uh, water, fire, air, we are bringing everything in, um, creating sacred geometry, triangles, circles, uh, so all of that is within, so I can't really go over everything, but I, you can, I can show some, some examples that you can see some of the, the major points, maybe the geometry of, of Okay, of for sure, yeah. for sure. Let's try it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so...
One thing that I noticed during your performance, one of the performances I saw, you were wearing this dress with the lights at the bottom, and you started twirling, and the sign waves were incredible. Uh, the trigonometry that I saw was mesmerizing. Uh, so we're going to try to recreate that, uh, and hopefully we can get it on, uh, on video. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. And light is very sacred to the ancient Mesopotamian, ancient Iranian, so light represents fire and purity. So uh, Zoroastrian. It's Zoroastrian, so I often use lights in order to show the the fire of the sacred fire. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. All right. One thing I forgot to ask you during the when we were talking was uh, you mentioned that some people whirl for hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's there is a saying that we only whirl for seventy-two hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Really. So, so, yeah, people, you can whirl for twenty-four hours, and you, once you're into that state of ecstasy, you're in sleep mode. Yeah. So, um, it could be dangerous because you can fall into that sleep mode and so someone has to wake you up, but you have to also train your brain to wake up because once you go into that sleep mode, then you can go on and on and on, yeah. So, there are, yeah, people do whirl for hours and wow. hours and hours, yeah. Wow, 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 that's cool. I mean, four or five hours is nothing. Four hours is nothing? No. People will whirl for, like I said, like 12 hours, 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow, incredible. Yeah. incredible. What's the longest you've done? The longest I've done is four and a half hours. Four and a half hours yeah. of work? Yeah, four and a half hours. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, cool. Straight. I mean, I have done where like, I would take a break for 10 minutes, come back, or wait for you know five minutes, and I, I went on for like almost 12 hours. Yeah. But straight without stopping, four and a half hours. Four and a half hours yeah. of work. Wow. Yeah. What was, it, what was it like when you came out of that? It's 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 very different. I mean, sometimes you cry because like emotional. You know, yes, you're very emotional when you come out of it. Sometimes you're very happy. It really depends on what you see because you start to see images. You start to hear things. Everything just becomes. You're completely in a. You know, it's. I can't explain it. Yeah, it's a trance. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. You've, you've It's like being high, and you come out of being mm -hmm. high, and like okay, I'm in this reality, and I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. So you're, bore, you're bearing your soul. You all your yeah, guards are down. Yeah. All your walls yeah. are down. It's yeah. um, I mean, in the Sufi tradition, they do say it's like death. You're dead, and then you have to come back. And sometimes dead people don't like to come back. Yeah, you know, they don't like to come back. They yeah. like what they see there. So, yeah. um, it's it's a it's a state of state of being. Being. So sometimes I get very emotional and I just cry. Yeah. Or sometimes people have said that I was screaming while I was whirling. Um, some people said that I've been laughing when I was whirling. And I don't understand, I don't know any of this. You don't remember? No, I don't remember any of this. But um, there are videos of me that I'm clapping and dancing while I'm whirling and I don't remember any of it. Wow. Um, there's, I mean, like I said, I, people said you were screaming and saying na names and I don't remember any. So you're in a sleep mode. In a trance, in a trance. Yeah. That's cool. That's where the shamanistic aspect of yeah. it comes from yeah. a lot. Yeah. And spiritual, all spiritual mythology yeah. and yeah. contemporary religions, I yeah. guess. Okay, um, cool. I forgot to tell you about the head, but we can do that later. And then the, the line of the head connected with the heart and going... Oh, wow. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen, that's some of the yeah. ones I've seen, right? Yeah. Yeah. The head is, is one of the most important part of the body that actually makes you go into trance. Mm. 